Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. And today we have, I am really excited and honored to have Marilyn Hammer on from the Dana Farber Cancer Institute. She came in from Boston today. Marilyn is the director of the Phyllis F. Cantor Center for Research in Nursing and Patient Care Services. Welcome. Thank you. So <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> we, we, we were concerned, so getting past two, and I thought, oh, she's, oh is she okay? You were down enjoying our library. Absolutely. It's very nice down there. The way I found her, you may be saying, how did Jan find her? My husband went to chemotherapy up the street at Dana Farber. And I was looking for wonderful guests. I always pick up, was picking up the, uh, their newsletter, the like newspaper. And who should be on the bottom? Should be on the top two. New Cantor Center director focused on training and collaboration. And she's right there, right down there. And I said, you look exactly the same. Yep. <laughs> she does in person. Now, it's immunology and gene research. Am I correct? Yeah, well, it's a, a bunch of um, areas really under the umbrella of precision health. Mm -hmm. So with precision health, it's looking at all of the factors, all of the um, patient factors from the patient's genome to the family to lifestyle to all of the factors that can impact health and wellness. Can it be for anybody? So, like if I walked in and said, can you do a genome search on me? Yeah. You could do this? Well, you can have your, um, as I guess you know, uh, commercially, you can have a genetic testing done at a number of places. It's a little either, scary. It is scary, <laughs> I don't scary, know if I yeah. want to know. The, you know, either more officially <laughs> yeah. through a uh, you know, doctor's office or through these online kits, which are, um, you know, at, at times a little bit questionable in terms of um, the ethics and returning results and how to interpret them. Um, but what we do at the center is a, a variety of uh, investigations, uh, just trying to help the overall health and well-being of patients uh, with cancer, survivors of cancer, and those at risk for cancer. So as um, a nursing scientists, we, um, we take a holistic approach to patient care. Yeah. So we do everything from un looking at underlying mechanisms where you get to the kind of uh, immunology area right. and the genetic area. To um, to a, a lot in um, in people's uh, health behaviors, lifestyle factors, and then environmental factors that can affect outcomes. It's so, amazing to me, and I look at my my family, mm -hmm. and on my father's side, they're up in their nineties when they passed. Yeah. That we only that I know of, there was only one person who had cancer. It was leukemia. Yeah. Was my mother's mother. Mm -hmm. And she was diabetic, but the diabetes didn't kill her. Evidently, they called it a pediatric form of leukemia because it held her, hit her so fast. Oh, Am I at risk? Because of one relative, there's nobody else that I know of who had cancer. So probably not from that standpoint. Um, yeah. If there was a, an underlying genetic predisposition, yeah. uh, then you know possibly definitely diabetes. But, so that's all. Yeah. So that's the diabetes strong on that be. side. Okay. Yeah. So that's so what. So when yeah. somebody t you'd look at a genome. Mm -hmm. How does the immunology, you can get the person say, we're going to immune you against? Oh, yeah, so that's a whole, um, it's kind of two different areas. So the in, immune system is one where um, the, the immune system has a number of functions. So if you cut yourself, if there's some injury, it'll help repair the tissue. Um, it also, uh, the immune cells identify and eliminate foreign microorganisms, and bacteria, and viruses. And then the other area is to stop abnormally forming cells. And when the, the um, cells kind of escape that detection point, that's when cancer can form, one of the roots. Um, so through the immune system, with some of the therapies now called targeted immunotherapies, they're trying to uh, help take th those, uh, what we know is healthy immune sections or, or immune markers within the DNA yeah. um, and have them inserted back into people to help detect and focus in on cancerous cells to help the immune system to eliminate it. Is that good so, for things like diabetes too? 
Well, there are some, there's research in diabetes in that area and other diseases as well. So it's, it's an unfolding area that there are some cancers it works better for than others. Again, trying to target and help the immune system to be uh, stronger. So um, there's a whole area in gene therapy that will target the cells like that, and then the immunotherapy, getting um, uh, using targets in the immune system to help the immune system better detect these abnormally forming cells or, or cells that have fully uh, grown into cancer and to eliminate them. And there's been, uh, again, there's some great successes yeah. and challenges and, and side effects and symptoms. With Where does it, it seem to be the most so. successful? Breast cancer or that type of thing? Um, actually, lung cancer lung is, is cancer. one of the... Yeah. The big ones. There's a big yeah. one. Too. How can a person who's never smoked, maybe nobody smoked around them as a kid, how yeah. do they get that? Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, people that do get lung cancer who are never smokers. Um, a lot of it is environmental exposures. Um, so secondhand smoke or other toxins in the air or wherever you happen to be um, and just a history being around a different uh, family or friends that who are smokers or yeah. factories so th there's a, a lot of exposures and there's even a, a new term called the tertiary uh, exposure to toxins which is it just even kind of further removed from wow. being like right next to uh, you know smoke that you're inhaling so there's so much in our atmosphere yeah. and you know and of course now there's such a um, and needed kind of a delayed need of looking at the environment and cleaning up our uh, planet as a whole because there's so many toxins everywhere. So, so now yeah. if a patient is going to Dana-Farber, whether here up the street in mm -hmm. Milford, if you're out of the country or wherever, you don't know where we're, yeah. but Boston is the main headquarters for Dana-Farber yeah. Cancer Institute. <clears throat> How would a patient, <clears throat> excuse me, go about getting this study done for themselves? How would they do that? So if they, um, mm -hmm. if somebody with cancer and wanted to see if there was an underlying genetic predisposition, so yeah. they would first... Um, get affiliated with an oncologist yeah. and then with the oncologist and a genetic counselor determine if it would be appropriate to be screened for a gene mutation yeah. uh, which might then be a target or uh, in, in other cases it's um, it's helpful to know in terms of other family members who might also need to be tested um, and have some sometimes it's increased screening or there's other kind of preemptive uh, therapies that can be used to try to mitigate the person actually other people in the family who are at greater risk for getting the cancer would it be used in place of chemotherapy is that a new new thing the way to handle um, there's in some cases immunotherapy is um, uh, instead of chemotherapy. Uh, sometimes it's in combination with chemotherapy, so it depends on the diagnosis and all. So, um, and, and another area that it's being used for is in the uh, gastrointestinal cancers as well. So, yeah. Yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, that is really good because. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a sigmoidoscopy and there's the colonoscopy. Right. Uh, there are some of us who prefer the, the SIG because it's quicker. Yeah, you don't need any sedation. In right. and and uh, <clears throat> it is the colon, that sigmoid, where I guess most of the cancers do come. So if you clean on that one, pretty good chance you're going to be clean on that one. Yeah. Um, now, you, when did you become come into nursing, Marilyn? When did you come? Yes, so I oh, where <laughs> where yes, I kind of had a long route <laughs> to, into nursing. Um, I actually started off with a business degree and was in advertising. And Where'd you go to college? I I went to several. So I, I first went uh, from New York at uh, Long Island University, got a business degree, yeah. um, and then, you know, pretty quickly decided I wanted to do more for. Uh, you know, a, a make a bigger contribution to, to the world. So I went to California yeah. and went to chiropractic school. Chiropractic? Yeah. Oh, I think I read about it. Yeah, yeah I became yeah. a chiropractor. Um, throughout a lot of this time, I was also a hospice volunteer, which is how I started to get attached to um, people with cancer. Um, so then uh, I was practicing as a chiropractor on people uh, mostly with cancer, some with HIV, and they were reporting that they were doing well with mm -hmm. their symptom management. I was also referring back and forth to an acupuncture clinic and just oh started to, you know, say, well, so what is working for these individuals that say that they're doing so well with their symptoms, even though they're going through chemotherapy? Is it the chiropractic care, the acupuncture, the combination, or just the type of person that seeks those services? Or support groups. That's, well, yeah, support, exactly. I love that. There's a that, whole yeah. kind of that holistic uh, 
kind of uh, how about the, the, the arts using so, arts like the coloring and there's so much there's a lot of music therapy yeah. um, actually even at uh, Dana Farber we have the Zakem Center for integrative therapy so is it Lenny we, Lenny Zakem or no no who was Zakem I forgot the first name of the uh, I think it's Leonard Zakem Leonard because yeah. there's a bridge from him because up here at um, at the Dana Farber Milford I know they have I saw some like colored pencils one time I thought. Well, I don't see anything to color on. So what I did is when we would go up there, I would bring like coloring sheets, mm -hmm. a color, you know, uh, puzzles, anything. But that's me. I mean, I'm thinking if this were me, what would I want? I would want to be keeping my hands busy. So, yeah. all right. So then from so California, that, you went to New York. Yeah. So, well, not yet. So not I, yet. <laughs> I came from New York. But I, it, so I went to, um, so it, I really wanted to go into research and I had a, a very, good friend who was a nurse who said, you know, go into nursing, yeah. you can do anything. And I uh, ended up fast tracking through a nursing program, completely fell in love with nursing. So you this it. is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, worked as an oncology nurse on, uh, on a medical surgical unit. And, um, uh, and then from there, went to graduate school at the University of Washington, got a master's and PhD, and then went back to New York uh, for a, a faculty appointment at NYU. Were you a kid then, still then? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> no, we, you know, we got, it was getting older, just oh my God. Uh, always working. Your parents school, must have so. said, where is she now? Yeah. <laughs> they must have been so proud. Oh, my gosh. My daughter, the doctor, and the nurse, yeah. I'm almost the same. So did you have to go to med school, or was it nursing school? It's um, first a, a traditional nursing program, and then graduate school, a PhD. In, uh, in research. Was it hard, the math part of it? I think that scares a lot of girls. Yeah, no, it, you know, it's the chemical uh, the measuring it. I'd hate to be responsible for goofing on somebody. I really would. Yeah. All right, so it, now. It, it's, yeah, I, I guess, you know, you like math and sciences if you're Science is cool, yeah. math. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, so, so from there, what were you doing? Yeah, so then, um, uh, so then I was in a faculty appointment at NYU at the Rory Myers uh, College of Nursing and then was recruited to Mount Sinai to start a, oh. um, a center for nursing research there. I've heard a lot of great things for, about Mount Sinai. It, it's a very good organization and then um, and then was recruited here to Dana-Farber which is uh, a, a really special and rare position so I, I just... How uh, long have you been over Dana-Farber? So now just six months so I'm brand new. <laughs> I Still getting my feet wet. Yeah. You seem like you've been there for years. But, yeah, no. So, oh. But it's, it's a magnificent Magnificent facility, so I'm, I'm thrilled to be there. Do you get to do face to face with patients, or you, you do the office research work? What do you get yeah, out? So of both. So um, so some of the research takes you face to face with patients when you enroll them in studies and have them go through um, their uh, whatever uh, data you're collecting from them, or if you have an intervention. So it, it's a nice uh, combination of both. Do you ever so. get down here to Milford, our branch up here? Yeah, Dana I Farber? haven't yet. So. Oh, that's right. I, I, was, yeah. I was just telling Marilyn, it's like five minutes up the road from Upton. Yeah. We are so lucky. I really, a trip to Boston every week or whatever. Yeah. We probably would go to UMass because they're the next highest ones up on mm -hmm. cancer uh, research. Yeah. Marilyn. We are talking with Marilyn Hammer, and she has a lot in her title. She is the director of the Phyllis E. Cantor, F. Cantor Center for Research in Nursing and Patient Care Services up at the Dana Faber Cancer Institute in Boston. And that's, if someone has a question, Marilyn, how would they reach you? Yeah, so um, you can reach me through email. You can um, find my email on the, um, the Dana Farber website. Uh, you can look under the Cantor Center, or the Phyllis F. Cantor Center, or um, you can email me directly, Marilyn J. Underscore Hammer at dfci.harvard.edu. Marilyn, what do you see coming up or as a vision with this research? Mm -hmm. Has it got a really good? Uh, you think it's got a good chance of really making it? There's so much research going on. I, I do think in uh, different areas. Um, with nursing science, one of the main areas we focus on is quality of life yeah. um, so and, and symptom management. Um, and I think we're making pretty good strides with that. Of course, with all of the new unfolding therapies yeah. like immunotherapy, you have new symptoms and, and new things to figure out along the way. But I, I do think that um, co the combination of understanding the underlying mechanisms, 
the uh, patient reported outcomes, what they're experiencing, looking at the person as a whole, yeah. that we will uh, make strides. And really importantly, we don't work in silos, so we do a lot of collaboration with the fantastic oncologists uh, in the different departments. Uh, and it's really uh, a team effort. We call it team science. Well, just yeah, you mentioned that that the golden word is uh, qu- words quality of life. Yes. I know that my husband going through chemotherapy, he was. I don't know if he would have quit, but he was on the verge of, like, my quality of life is not, ugh, I don't like this. And what they did, they were terrific at Dana-Farber. They brought down his, the amount they were giving him, a couple times. Mm-hmm. That was great. Then they gave him a choice. Well, you know what, <clears throat> you can bring it down here as well, but also you can wear a pump. So he would do that over the weekend, nice. and it just hooks up to the port. Yeah. He's done with it now, but it, it did such a difference, and they found him something that would work for nausea. Yeah. Believe it or not, Ativan, which is a known relaxant tranquilizer, yes. but they use it, the mind-body connection. Is yeah, that, so could you see that a lot? Yes, yeah, so, so that's not uncommon. Yeah. Um, and, and looking at that whole mind-body connection is really important, and it, I think it's something that uh, Dana-Farber excels at, looking at the patient as a whole, listening to the patient, seeing you know, what, what is important to the patient. Uh, it's it, really important with decision-making, too, with different treatments. Right. Uh, different treatments will give you different symptoms. So what's most important to you with your quality of life? Um, and then looking at what your projected uh, long-term outcome would be depending on what you choose. But sometimes people want really aggressive, even though it can be very debilitating. Oh, they want you know, yeah. longer life. Um, others want better quality of life and however it's manageable. But very interesting, there's been some studies that really show if you're feeling better, if you have better functional status and quality of life yeah. and less symptoms, that you're more likely to actually continue, um, to continue yeah, and, and live longer. So, yeah. so it's important. So you really have to, um, it, it's a joint decision. It's not from uh, kind of how medicine was years ago where the doctor told you what to do. This, yeah. is, it, this is shared decision making. So really important to hear the voice of the patient. Well, Dr. Rossi, he's, he's great up here at uh, mm-hmm. the Milford Dana-Farber. It's terrific with my husband. Oh my God! You know he would. He even used the word "good quality of life." In yeah. other words, he took it very seriously. Yes. Very listening. A lot of the and the nurses are outstanding. They, it's all like they've taken Dale Carnegie courses on how to how to get along with people and all this. They, they see it all. I mean, yeah. they really yeah. they see an awful lot. When my grandmother back in the yeah, mid '60s, I was just a kid, was diagnosed with a, a pediatric form, a quick thing of leukemia. I don't know how that happened. Back then they didn't have the resources yeah. and they said, well, take her home. She's got about six months. Yeah. She was only in her 70s, only in her 70s as far as I know. And we prepared at home. We made a nice room for her, everything. We were yeah. looking forward to it. She never made it. We got a call from, it was Deaconess Hospital back then. Yeah. She's gone. And my mother, we did, we, they just saw her. It, it was, uh, I don't know how something like that can happen so soon. Is it that they didn't catch it soon enough? It sounds like it was probably very aggressive and very advanced. Wow. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. they were going to give her any other, it, I don't think they did. They have chemo back in the 60s? Yes. They did. Yeah. So it's, it actually started uh, during World War II in the 1940s. They discovered a mustard gas. Oh, yeah. Was the first chemotherapy. Yeah. Uh, just from the exposures that the soldiers were getting to mustard gas, and they noticed that their immune systems were actually being kind of wiped out. So they, yeah. uh, they you know, turned that finding into, hey, maybe we can use this to fight cancer. And yeah. that's really was the beginning of it. Um, and during prior to that, they had radiation therapy. And yeah. then, of course, very, very aggressive uh, surgeries. Very invasive, yeah. Yeah, it is. And then I know that many years ago, I went through radiation. Mm. But it wasn't because of cancer. Before I even made it to UMass, the specialist up there, I had lived in Rhode Island, and there were a couple of doctors who thought it was it was a parotid tumor. Mm-hmm. Common, kind of. They thought it was a cyst. So they went in and invaded it. Really nothing happened. By the time I saw Dr. Kim, the mm-hmm. specialist up at UMass, he got me an MRI. He says, you have a mass along your neck, and it's heading towards your spine. Mm-hmm. That's all I needed. I'm like, oh, okay. And... 
So I had that taken out very successfully. did a beautiful job. He says, I want you to have radiation. I'm like, but you said it wasn't, yeah. it was, he says, uh-uh. He says, this is to make sure, hopefully, that no stray cells got to the point where I can't get it next time. Yeah. Yeah, I did go through that quality of life. I called him. I said, look, <laughs> I was doing TV shows. My mouth was like the arid oh. desert. I, said, I, I don't think I want to do this anymore. He said, calm down. I'm going to talk with the oncologist, radiologist. We'll see if we can't adjust it. And he did. And I went through it. But, you know, it wasn't for cancer, but it was, it was odd. I felt funny and, like, it was like an yeah. insurance policy. Yeah. Now, my husband, it's sort of like, what he, you know, as you know, what he was going through, almost an insurance policy for him because they only found one node out of the 12 that they took. I mean, how lucky. I mean, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah, oh, my God. When, when you did hospice, Marilyn, mm -hmm. what was it like? Because I've often wondered about volunteering for that. I don't know if I'm cut out. I don't know. It's, um, I think it's a very special place to be. It, it's, um, it, it's a privilege to be with somebody near the end of life yeah. and just to spend time with them and to um, just see what they need. Um, I, I used to give some like foot massages and whatever yeah. comfort measures. Uh, sometimes they just want to talk or um, yeah. kind of tell a little bit about their life story. And it's um, and then as an oncology nurse as well, just uh, you know, being with somebody holding their hand when they take their last breath, I th it's one of the most um, oh. kind of sacred times in life uh, as with the transition part of it. And it's. Um, it would, if it's somebody that's had a full life, it's, you yeah. know, it's kind of a, it, it's a nice place of honor when it's somebody that's younger. You, it's just, it's so devastating because yeah. you feel like what the life that they didn't get to live. So yeah, not know, everybody, it, people think, uh-oh, hospice, that means a person is definitely going to pass away. No, well, I've they, heard it can go a very long time. And yeah. they can also, yeah, they don't, I've heard there have been some, like, recoveries. There's some people that get um, uh, graduated off of hospice <laughs> care if they go, you know, yeah. past this. Maybe palliative. So. No. And then, yeah, so then there's the, the palliative comfort measures. We have that up the street. Yeah, yeah, we have that too. Yeah, which, which is really wonderful. But I mean, uh -huh. it's interesting, um, you know, you think about it philosophically, we, we all have, you know, this X number of lifespan and we kind of, our goal is to, um, you know, like a hundred years is golden. If we hit to the 90s, oh, yeah, you I know, we've it. lived a good life, yep. but, um, you know, but we just don't know. So making the best of the time we have here, uh, living life to the fullest and just being surrounded by, yeah. you know, wonderful people and trying to do good things for the next generations. Very it's, true. You know, Marilyn, was anybody that. in your family challenged by cancer? Yes, so um, it, this actually is interesting. Um, it's not why I went into this area, but um, my father had a renal cell carcinoma in um, just the 70s. Uh, he ultimately died from cardiac failure in the wow. 80s, so mm -hmm. young. But, and, then, uh, and then my mother later in life had um, endometrial cancer. So, um, but, and also cardiac issues. So you get to a certain point and you have these comorbid right. conditions, yeah. Oh my God, you know, so, yeah. see, I don't, do you deal with many children up there at Dana? There's a, yeah, there's a lot of, um, and wonderful care uh, with the uh, Jimmy Fund Foundation and, oh. and the uh, Jimmy Fund Clinic. Marilyn, how can people get a hold of you again? Okay, so uh, again, you can uh, Google online at the Dana-Farber Cancer Center, looking at the Phyllis F. Cantor Center for Research in Nursing and Patient Care Services, or email me directly, Marilyn J. underscore hammer at dfci.harvard.edu. You know, I was reading that, you know how most, a lot of people, uh, they get told by their doctor that this is, yes, this is cancer. And they think automatically it's a death sentence. But it's not no. anymore. No, in many cases, it, you have to think of it as a, a chronic condition. Yeah. It, it's something you manage. Um, you go through the treatment phases, and then you have other challenges in their survivorship phase, um, yeah. often because the symptoms are long-lasting. Yeah. You think so, that even after being treated, a person can have some symptoms that last for a while? Yeah. Why is that? Because it brought down the immune system to, to, in other words, to kill the bad cells? So the parts of that we don't know the answer to. So yes, some is that um, the uh, immune system is certainly depleted and has to um, re- 
uh, generate it and restrengthen yep. at times, uh, particularly with the hematologic malignancies where that's yeah. the location of the cancer itself. Um, through the chemotherapy and radiation, um, there's lingering symptoms of fatigue, and that's sometimes one of the most devastating for patients, and, and that it's just very continuous for years out, mm -hmm. that it's very hard to function, and it, it's, it's fatigue that's unrelieved by sleep. Um, so we call it chemotherapy, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, chemo fatigue, chemotherapy induced fatigue or related fatigue, and it's, um, so that's, that's one that can be really difficult, and some, then sometimes it's partnered with sleep disturbances. Um, we, some, we look at symptom clusters, mm -hmm. uh, uh, particularly we've been looking at pain, fatigue, depression, and sleep disturbance because they can all kind of coexist together um, at different levels. So, um, and then there's other um, symptoms, sometimes uh, people post-treatment uh, develop diabetes, from blood sugar problems, and it's mm -hmm. one of the areas that I yeah. uh, investigate, looking at blood sugar, how that impacts immune function. Um, so there's um, there's certainly long-term challenges, and then just the anxiety and fear and fear yes. of cancer recurrence. Definitely. Yeah. I know that there is, um, over up here at our data, they probably have in Boston, support group for the caregivers, very important, yes. also for the survivors and people going through treatment. Terrific. They also connected me with a um, mentor or peer-to-peer, -peer, so a mentor program universally around in the country. Mm -hmm. And I, my mentor, I think she's in Spain, and her husband, I think her husband went through this type of thing. And uh, they try to hook you up with somebody who's been through or knows somebody who had that same particular cancer. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm thinking, why would they put me with someone in Spain? Probably because they were distinctly trying to find someone who had been there, done that. Yeah, somebody well matched that you could have yeah. a, a nice correspondence. She still what so much writes to me and she'll say, you know, congratulations, you know, on her husband the last uh, mm -hmm. the last thing that's it's it's amazing. I had never walked through anything like that. A friend of ours went through Dana Farber successfully. And that was great because it was sort of a mentoring for us. Yeah. And we thought, Okay, I've heard about this. I've heard the rooms are great up here. My gosh, you get your own room. TV. Sometimes there's a bathroom of your own in there, and the lunch ladies bring the cart around, yes. and they have these little finger sandwiches. It's really good, and puddings. <clears throat> and there's a little kitchenette you can go to get coffee or whatever. They do anything they can, and they, the doctor bent over backwards. He, to him, my my uh, husband was an enigma because he never dealt with someone who had reacted so badly to that main push in the beginning yeah. and he was very he okay we're going to bring this back now even with radiation it that's meant to kill the any crowd bad cells i remember going through that and i remember my side of my face was like leather yeah um uh, and the tiredness and then the mouth it was so dry yeah i can sympathize with oh my god they give you a diploma at umass <laughs> after you finish your radiation <laughs> This really, do they do that at Dana Farber? Well, there's uh, there's recognition when you finish. Yeah, certainly. But, That's um, really good. good. You, you, so you've never been up to our Dana Farber? Uh, no, not this site. Like, Gotta go. Yes, I think you really, really enjoy. There's a piano there, like probably in Boston. For somebody. Yes, ex exactly. All of the satellites are really fantastic. Yeah, there's a guitarist right, yeah. who comes up there. It's so nice. cute. Yeah. I, you know, people nowadays, if they think, oh, oh, this is going to be scary, this is going to be horrible. No way. You go up there and they've got, you got the kitchenette, they'll give you little girls when you lose your hair. You could just have a free adorable hat and all colors, hand knit knitted. Yeah. You could dress anyway. You could come in your pajamas. I usually have a backpack full of, like, something to read. A, puzzles. Yeah. It's amazing how the time goes by. And that little machine, my husband had the IV in, when it's done, and I'll never forget that. Yeah. You can just say, you can watch when it's, your time is coming up, you know, when it's yeah. going to be over. It's like, yes. Yeah, it's oh, exciting. Yeah. And, and you brought up a, another good point, the um, the care of the caregivers. Oh, yeah. Because there's so much stress on you at, yeah. at, with your loved one going through this and, and all the, a lot of uh, burden and extra support. And yeah. so we, we also do um, very much care about the caregivers. Yeah. And you're a team together. Yeah, you know? definitely. I know that yeah. I've <clears throat> told my audience many times that I watched my father basically kill himself, taking care of my mom. He wasn't taking care of himself. 
he went out to see visit her in the hospital and just passed out in the parking lot. He never came oh. home. They were both only in their 80s, and my family that's young. Yeah. And my mother nearly killed herself taking care of my grandfather. He needed to be in a hospital. He was in his 90s. He was not. So I was the one in the family that rocked the boat. I said, hey, this is killing my mom. She, she's only in her late 50s. She looked like she was exhausted. She wasn't a nurse, but she had so much compassion. Yeah. Finally, they did get Grandpa into a facility, but I, boy, I'm telling you, you've got to be pretty brave to rock your family like that. Yeah. And I told my father, you made a choice between your fa father and your wife, and you chose your father. My father didn't want to hear that. Years later, he said, Jan was right. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it takes some guts. It does. I didn't know where the hammer was going to fall on me. I was still pretty young living with them, but it worked. Grandpa got the care he needed. My mother finally got... Yes. Off the hook. Yeah. Have you seen that a lot with caregivers? Yes. It, it's it's very stressful. There's um, so yeah. So sometimes there are different alternatives of how to uh, take care of people yeah. um, because you're as a caregiver you're also at risk for health issues just as you've described. So, yeah. Nervous breakdown. Know, <laughs> I couldn't even recognize my father's voice on the phone. It had only yeah. been a week. We came and found him in the apartment. He was living on that, that uh, insure type of thing called Boost. Yes. I think that's what he was living on. Yeah. yeah. I just, whew. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, and she lived a year after that in a nursing home. So, you know, it would have been great if they'd gone with sister living. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think he'd be alive today. Yeah. Yeah, I really do. We are talking again with Marilyn Hammer. What an interesting, interesting person. She is from Dana-Farber in Boston. The, from the, <clears throat> she is the director of the Phyllis F. Cantor Can Center for Research in Nursing and Patient Care Services. Do you get onto the floors a lot? Do you really get to get in with them, see how the things are working? So sometimes uh, we'll... Um uh, when we have research studies that, again, involve patients, if they're on the infusion units, um, sometimes we'll meet them there. We try to, um, any research that's done, blend in with clinical care yeah. because it's such a, um, it, it's so busy and there's, you know, uh, just so many people that need to see each patient and right. take care of the family members as well in, right. in different areas. So, um, so we do try to blend in that way, but at, at times we do get to see, um, you know, again, having the one-on-ones with the patients, whether it be in, in the mainstream care or we meet them separately. Yeah. I think, um, I know, I've been over to UMass for a couple of major surgeries, and I've always thought, in the pre-op, I think that there should be, like, some kind of teddy bear for guys on that yes. bed and one for the girls. I think it's very therapeutic if you've been in the hospital or whatever, you're going in, right? I don't know, I mean... I'd have that teddy bear sleeping with me all the time. Yeah. You know, I would really, I enjoy it. I think little things like that add up. Yeah, the other nice thing is uh, sometimes they have like pet therapy. Oh, like yeah, the, the kitties, the dogs, oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's all, you know, very... Um, do they have they, that at Dana Farber in Boston? So, yeah, so they there's... Do. there's. Uh, they do bring in the... the uh, I don't it, know if they do that yet up in Milford at Dana Farber. I don't know. And they have them... Um, I don't know if they're on the main um, oncology yeah. uh, ambulatory, but I think they're in the hospitals. The hospital part. Yeah. Well, Milford is doing a good job. They just uh, redid their fourth floor for palliative care and people who are going through a real struggle, which is very good, too. Mm -hmm. UMass, Milford, all work in tandem with our Dana-Farber. It doesn't get much better than that in this. if you live in this area. A lot of people watch from out of the country or across. And um, I think my friend in Japan, I don't know where her medical care is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and the one in California who's watching all the time, she says, They've got lousy medical care over there. Uh, I'm like, geez, I hope she doesn't get real sick because I don't know where she's going to go. Is finances, do you think that's going to get any better for these people? Uh, you can't turn someone away. Oh, no, 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 you can't. Uh, it, it is hard, and, and depending, um, it, sometimes it is quite an extra financial burden, uh, and it's an area that's now labeled financial toxicity because it adds a whole other layer of stress. Definitely. But there's um, wonderful resources. Social workers will often help uh, try to figure out the best financial yeah. way to um, get you through treatments. Talking about those caretakers, I know that my father, God bless him, he wanted to be 
He was going to go down with the ship. He even used that. He didn't need, think he needed the help coming in. Right. Unfortunately, that was his downfall. Yeah. But there is help out there. You can have somebody come, can't you, a caregiver? Or? Yeah, oh, yes. You know, depending on your situation, um, a lot of times there's home health aides or um, mm -hmm. nurses uh, that will come in and help. What if you so, can't pay or does your insurance doesn't cover it? Yeah. Then what? Yeah, so then it, it, it depends on, again, the situation and yeah. uh, social services will help they can you help to out. that out. Yeah, so it's not all black and white. It's not a, It's not in the least black and white. So you're a caregiver. You don't have to, you know, be the one and only and go down with the ship. Like I visited right. my son my family. It's just awful. My father was terrific. In the kitchen he had a whole boop, boop, boop of all of her medications. It looked yeah. like a pharmacy and he had made it completely... Talk about being devoted. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's... <laughs> yeah, it's hard to keep track of it. You know, it's yeah. stressful. A lot of times the caregiver is trying to still maintain a yeah. full-time job, and sometimes there's you know, children involved to take yeah. care of. So it's, it's a very stressful time. Yes. So um, really again, looking at the whole family in this together is really important in trying to help the best path. Marilyn, do you give any presentations in different places? Yes. Yeah. How far will you go to travel? Uh, the farthest I've gone is Hong Kong. Oh, well, okay. I guess uh, New Mass and Milford are too far right. away. <laughs> I was going to say, it'd be great to have you um, give like, uh, a speech presentation at UMass, uh, you know, right over here in Worcester, it's so close, Milford. It would be really, really awesome, even if over Dana Farber. Think that might be a possibility? Yeah, well, I'm sure there, there'll be different times of uh, be, doing. We, we, we all kind of give presentations at each other's facilities and we go to conferences together and, and network. So, were you surprised when they did the article on you in their newsletter? Yeah, well, so they had um, contacted me about that um, as a, a new director. Yeah, they, I guess, you know, did the story. But, uh, I, I didn't expect to get an email from you. Oh, from yeah, I know. I mean, did they have every, yeah. team, every time we went up there to, to David Farber, yeah. I picked this up inside the Institute, and it gives stories about staff as well as people recovering. Yeah. It's very inspiring. And then this is a huge article on Maryland. <clears throat> um, she's a nationally known nurse scientist. Ha. Is it because you work at Dana Farber, or you've been around and shared your knowledge with a lot of people? Yeah, uh, I think it's just kind of been over the years, and uh, and working, networking with other nurse scientists uh, and other collaborators. Um, there, it's funny. I don't think of myself as a nationally known <laughs> nurse scientist. <laughs> That's what they wrote. Um, there's certainly so many others around the country that I, um, you know, wish to emulate. So. I love this. Um, second career as an oncology nurse, and then on to master's and doctoral degrees. That's pretty impressive. That's, that's a long time. I mean, of course, you were at Mount Sinai in New York, and you've been in Dana-Farber for six months. What, what a change of environment. Yeah, it's a, it is a change in environment. It's different um, in that, uh, well, first of all, coming from uh, Mount Sinai, which yeah. has a, a wonderful cancer center, there's it. You know, it's all diseases. It's a very, very yeah. huge system. Right. So just being completely oncology focused yeah. is. But really, that's what you want. Right, it's what I. Yeah, How did they find you, or did you find them? So they. Um, it, well, there's a just a small percent of of us uh, nationally who are PhD prepared nurse scientists. So yeah. we kind of know each other. Oh, okay. So, uh, so yeah. That's how you knew. And, and, yeah, but that and, and then also the former uh, director who had been there for ten years was my uh, former mentor. Uh, oh. So she, when she was going to step down, this is uh, Adana Berry, she called me and said, you know, would you consider, yeah. you know, succeeding me? And I was so honored and. Uh, and uh, you know, felt like well, you know, this would be a very big move. But um, you're not you're not constrained to your office. You get to walk about and boost. yeah. Do you get to the exactly. research centers? We have right up in the Worcester, across from UMass, they've got the research centers and everything. Do you yeah. ever get to? Them? I haven't been to Worcester, no, but I, I do have uh, different uh, colleagues who are at UMass Worcester. So oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I tell people they, they don't they're not aware of it that. You got the med school and research up yeah. there. That's pretty cool. There's a lot. I mean, other than that, we'd have to go to Boston. 
Right. Which yeah. is really, how long did it take you to get here from? Um, not that long, maybe 45 minutes, but. Whoa, you flew. I, it, it was, uh, <laughs> I was lucky there was no traffic. So. Yeah. I think Paul was saying, you might have a little trouble uh, going home. You might yeah, have a little trouble right. going. Um, <laughs> there goes this. And it's like, <clears throat> Marilyn, if people want you to come and give a presentation, yeah. Would they contact you, or is there a personnel person that they would connect with? Yeah, they, they could contact me directly. They would That's contact. Yeah. Once again, how can they reach you? Okay, so at the uh, the Dana Farber Cancer Institute website, looking for the Phyllis F. Cantor Center in re re for research in nursing and patient care services, or you can email me directly, Marilyn J. Underscore Hammer at dfci.harvard.edu. If you're interested in the research that Marilyn is involved in, the genes and the immunology, that type of thing, they can feel free to connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. Or we have so many other wonderful nurse scientists within the Cantor Center that are, are doing just phenomenal work in, again, in symptom science, in decision making, in, um, in just understanding underlying mechanisms. Yeah. Um, so, you know, any of us uh, would be happy to uh, have discussions with you and share our knowledge. This is great. You know, drove all the way down from Boston, Dana Farber, to be here with us. And uh, what I, you know, I took a chance. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I see this person. There's a person who is right now recovering, who went up to the Methuen branch. I think she's yes. gonna be on probably in the spring. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, people want to get out there and tell their story. Yes. They really do, and it helps other people watching. Like, they're. There is a happy ending. It's not. There is. It's yes. not black and white anymore. No, it's not at all black and white. No, so. it, it isn't. Thank you for yeah. being with us. Oh, thank you. Aww. Nice. you'll come back sometime. I hope. Sure. Thank yeah, you. Me too. We'll see you next time. I'll be my guest. Riding on a shooting star. Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer Than it seems Moving through the cloud